Now this is a review of our stay at Ludington State Park Campground, about seven miles north of Ludington, Michigan, on the western coast of Michigan, eastern coast of Lake Michigan. As you enter the park, you're driving along the lake shore, maybe no more than 30 to 100 feet from the shoreline, and it's a good four or five miles here between the entrance of the park and the campground. And you can stop along anywhere along here. Uh, there's turnouts where you can stop. And you go down and uh, use the beach for the day. So you can be kind of isolated if you'd like. Well, this is our site at the Ludington State Park in Michigan. This is one of the most popular, if not the most popular, parks in Michigan. With 650 sites or so, it's also one of the largest. And there are so much things to do here, I just don't know where to begin. Now the park is situated on an isthmus with Lake Michigan to the west and Hamlin Lake to the east. So it's a very desirable area. And like most all state parks, especially this one, uh, the sites are well worn. And in fact, you need to get reservations in as soon as you can for this place because they're absolutely full all the time. This is one of the parks that do not have any reserved sites for walk-ins or for drive-ins. They're all 100% reserved, reservable. And I reserved this spot about six weeks ago and it was the last spot uh, that was available when I did it. And we're getting out of the prime season now, starting heading into uh, you know, the end of summer vacation season when the kids don't have school and things. So. But still, it's, it's still quite busy. If you ever want to stay here, you can reserve up to six months in advance, so I highly, highly recommend reserving as early as you can do. And just over to the uh, east of where we're staying is what's called Lost Lake, which is just a small channel kind of almost where people park their boats and things. And Hamlin Lake is beyond that, yeah. Well, one of the big attractions to Ludington is the miles and miles of uh, improved trails that they have. And uh, they even have their own lighthouse that you can uh, walk to. So uh, this is probably one of the more developed state parks in the uh, Michigan park system. Not all the trails are on the boardwalk, uh, but the trails are well marked and well established. And you see these signposts along the way. And they also distribute maps as well, so you should not really get lost here. And Hamlin Lake is a pretty good sized lake. Um, a lot of people take their boats out here. They bring their boats with them. Uh, and you can also rent kayaks and canoes and rowboats as well if you don't have a boat. You can get out on the water in a multitude of ways. Now this is Hamlin Lake Beach. Uh, and it has its own pavilion where you can get uh, snacks and some essentials. Uh, people tend to come here if it's too cold on Lake Michigan. Now, if you remember, I said this was on an isthmus. This is on the east side of the park, and Lake Michigan being on the west side. So the campground is between these two beaches. Well, Hamlin Lake is about nine miles long and about a mile and a half wide. And it's actually created by damming up of the Osabo River. And we're standing on the top of the dam right here. And this is still in the park, still part of the state park. And as I said, this is the dam on the Osabo River, and it heads out there for about a mile, and it empties into Lake Michigan. Now you can rent a tube, and you can launch down here, and uh, float your tube all the way out to Lake Michigan. So uh, just another one of the many activities here. And again, they got these signposts along the way, all the trails, got a little doggy station and uh, map and everything. So it's hard to get lost here. And that little patch of beach is where you would launch your canoe or kayak or tube if you're going to go down the Osabo River here all the way to the lake, all the way to the mouth of Lake Michigan. And again, we're not that far from the dam, so you get a bit of a current to assist you. And again, especially around the river, there's a lot of boardwalk improved uh, trails. And here we have the Skyline Trail. It goes up all the way to the top of a dune. And I didn't say yet, but we're in dunes here. This whole park is in a big dune area. 
So we're going to climb up to the top of that and look at the view at the top. Well, we've made it to the top of the Skyline Trail, which is about 200 feet above uh, the park itself, so it's quite a climb. But we made it, and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous day here. Well, we're at the top of the Skyline Trail, and all you can see forever is dunes, and then right there is Lake Michigan. And we can look down the coast of Lake Michigan. And we can just almost see Ludington in the distance. This is all, all dunes here for 7 to 10 miles. Well, we're literally at the top of the dune here, as you can see from all the sand that has blown across the uh, boardwalk. But again, we just got a gorgeous, gorgeous view of Lake Michigan out there. And we're looking to the south. And to the east is Michigan itself, then Lake Michigan. And of course, you can't see far enough, but if you were to see 80 miles or so west, uh, which would be in that direction, would be uh, Wisconsin. There's also an amphitheater to park, and yeah, never a big one, but uh, you know, they have entertainment and they have magic shows and uh, musicals and you know, uh, presentations by experts and on wildlife and things and all sorts of stuff. And they don't have something going on every day, but you got to check the schedule to see um, what they have. Well, the next real entertainment is the Salt City Dixie Jazz Band on the 29th of August, but we're going to miss that. We're going to be gone by then. And if you have a pet, especially a dog, um, watch out for porcupines here. Uh, my brother was camping here one time and his dog got into porcupine and they had to take it to the vet and get about 30 needles taken out of his jaw, so just be aware of that. And actually, you don't even have to be a camper to use the trail system because that's open for day use area. You can just park your vehicle in the day use area and use the trails. Don't even have to camp here. And this is the second bridge on the Osable River uh, downstream from the dam a little bit between the dam and Lake Michigan. This is the entrance to the Pines Campground, which is the westernmost of the three main campgrounds at Ludington. There is another campground that is uh, walk-in only, hike-in, I should say, hike-in only uh, that Boy Scouts use and things that, so, because you got to bring your tent and everything with you. But for the ones that use, that, for the ones that accommodate RVs, there's three main uh, campgrounds, and this is also the smallest one. Now this is the middle campground, uh, the second of three, and uh, the camp store, the main camp store, is over here. This is the main camp store where you can get firewood, uh, all of your essentials, and you can even rent bicycles here. This is kind of unusual for a state park. Most uh, Michigan state parks don't have anything like this. The only problem is it's about uh, three quarters of a mile of a hike from our campsite. So we're going to have to get our little fold up wagon to go get some firewood. Now this is the entryway to Beechwood Campground, which is the third and most eastern of the campgrounds uh, at Ludington. It's also the largest with about 350 spots. This is the one we're in. Now this is the main beach house at the beach today uh, on Lake Michigan. And we'll go down to the beach, but uh, red flag's out. We're just at a day after a storm, so it's pretty ugly looking out there. So we'll go out and look at it. This is the upper story in the beach house. And uh, it was actually built by the CCC in the 30s. Nice polished floors and everything. And then uh, we'll come over and uh, look at the lake. There you go. And it's looking pretty ugly today. Uh, Lake Michigan and Oliver Fury. 
but I've actually seen it worse. In a day like today, everybody's going to be at Hammond Lake Beach, and that's the beauty of this park because we're on the west side of the park, which is Lake Michigan, and then, as you recall, on the east side of the park is Hammond Lake, which is a lot more docile on a day like today. And here's where the Osabo goes into Lake Michigan. Now, normally, this river would be outflowing, but with such wind and water and waves today, it's actually reversed course up to some point near the dam. Well, we were just sitting here admiring a sculpture, and three deer just jumped up, ran all the way across in front of us here. So you'd be able to see anything here at the state park. And the park itself is nestled within the dunes area. This is the trail to the lighthouse, and it's, again, miles and miles of dunes. Well, we're at the Big Sabo Point Lighthouse, which is still on Ludington State Park uh, property. And this is about a mile and a half north of the entrance to the state park. And actually, from our campground, uh, it's about three miles. Luckily, you can ride your bike here, so that's what we did. So a six-mile round trip on bicycle uh, to get to the lighthouse. There's one little known fact about Great Lakes lighthouses, and if you take all the Great Lakes together, all five of them, uh, that there are more lighthouses on the Great Lakes than there are on the coastal waters, uh, oceans that is, of the United States. If you're into lighthouse hunting, uh, Great Lakes is the place to be. Well, if you're physically able to, and you want to spend five dollars, you can climb to the top of the lighthouse. But the steps are very narrow and you got to go through a couple hatches, so you may or may not want to do that. Well, Ludington State Park has something like 12 named trails and several other unnamed trails, anywhere from about a quarter mile long to one and a half miles. Well, this is the main check-in building here and the nice five-lane dump station, four or five lanes. The only real issue, if there is a downside to Ludington, is that this is two miles away from the campground. Now, I suppose it's not that big of an issue because each campground has a little mini dump station that will accommodate your plastic uh, dump buddies. Um, so I suppose from that perspective, I guess it's not really a big issue.